morning, everyone. Happy Friday, October. Got those October skies outside. Not that you're outside, right? You could be. You could be on your mobile watching this. Uh, you could be taking a run. Could be getting some reps in, like uh, some strong people like to do, and all that. Uh, welcome to the show, Open Mic. So yeah, totally forgot to put the streamer link in the chat. I'll put it in the chat now. Anybody who wants to come in can. Uh, we keep the four people to screen at one time, including myself. So three other guests at a time will rotate through. However, uh, I got a couple of people who have, uh, are in the green room already. I'll bring them in in a moment and uh, a couple other people at least that may show up. So excited for the show. Excited to get uh, one in today and uh, lots of cool stuff going on in Hexaco ever since uh, me, uh, Crispy and Axis uh, did the stream on Wednesday, which was fire. That was Hex Power Hour. Uh, anyways, I'll say hi to the chat real quick and we'll get into it. Red Squirrel, what's happening, man? What's happening? Good to see you. UFO to go is back. How's it going, man? Hex Payday is in the green room. No for T-shares, also in the green room. Surprise, surprise. Crypto Gains Club 369. Love that name. Very cool. Love the hat. I like when you put the hat in there. It reminds me of, of the magician that uh, we used to see all the time. He had an avatar on his very popular profile right now. His name's Richard Hart. That's, uh, that's what it means to me. Uh, liquid loans delays. Yes, that's... Uh, I haven't saw the video, but I'll, however, I saw the I saw Crypto Crazy's face in the thumbnail. And that's, that's what I guessed. So uh, anyways... It's all good. It's all good. Bang, bang. What's up, Vets and Crypto? Without further ado, welcome back to the show, both these gentlemen, Hex Payday and Nilf T-Shirts. How's it going? Hey, all. Hey, doing well. Doing well. It's uh, So Hex Payday did a demo last week, Founders Week, um, on Friday, too. If, if people aren't familiar and if he wants to show something today at some point as well, uh, he, he can. But uh, yeah, just glad to have him back for Open Mic. And of course, uh, Nilf for T-Shirts. Putting in the good work on Tetra, getting all you that uh, automation and, and DeFi traffic and all this stuff for Pulse Chain. So very excited for uh, to have both of you on the show today. Yeah, thanks. Pre appreciate you having me. Yeah. Yep. So Likewise. What, what, you want to start with uh, Neil? Neil mentioned there may be some Tetra updates. You want to start with that? Yeah, sure. I will. Um, yeah, we got our partial audit back uh, this week, and uh, just a few little tweaks we got to do to uh, uh, for the Dex our Dex aggregator. Then once uh, once we get all that wrapped up and then do some internal testing, and we'll send it off again for the final audit. And then we're ready to go on testnet with uh, Atlas and Stratus and the aggregator. Yes. So that's where we'll be. So we're just just right around the corner. I mean, I think I, I talked to Stu earlier. I think most of the, the tweaks are already finished or just about. I mean, they were so minor, just some minor code things, nothing of any serious redundancies and stuff like that in the code so other than that though yeah we're, we're about ready to rock and roll so Stu was very confident last week that it will be launching before 2024 he was very confident in that statement so yeah, yeah. it was, it was I, i'm very excited about that uh, something else to play with mentor just launched uh it's a sad and charter maybe join yep. us later as well but boy these full chain projects keep launching uh tetra again i did a i have a whole bunch of content streams uh clips coming out uh, from time to time if you want to know more about that we're asking the chat but a very exciting project that i think can do a lot of things for pulse chain uh if it, if it goes well so yeah because for us tetra is done it, that's the atlas all is finished that's not the issue it's just the aggregator had to be done for us to make it make tetra more efficient and function uh, in a way that's uh, beneficial for everybody to use it so that was just one of the reasons that we had that it's taken so long it's not the tetra itself but the stratus is done too so it's just something we had to build uh because of all that debacle with okx and you know the nodes and all that good stuff how about the community marketplace? That's something that uh, is, is pretty critical too to have those things that get, I got to still on Stu. Like, I think 90% of people will just be using the marketplace, 10% maybe writing their own strategies and otherwise. Is that how, how will things roll out? Is that going to be, you know, with Atlas or otherwise or, or later on? Uh, as of now, when we release uh, on Testnet, we'll have all three products the Dex Aggregator, Atlas, and then Stratus. Uh, when we go to Mainnet, at least as of last conversation, I know Atlas and Dex Aggregator will be first. Stratus will come at a point later. Exactly how long, I'm not quite sure. It may just be a, a technical rollout thing. Uh, we'll just wait and see based on test net results, basically. That's right. That's right. Expedia, do you have a, I think you mentioned you want to have a conversation with Neil as well around uh, Tetra or otherwise? Yeah, yeah. I was just kind of curious. So, um, uh, well, I, I guess we'll find out soon, but I, I'm guessing that your contracts are permissioned. Is that right? So, like, it goes through your guys's uh, like central central like access point. Is that right? Or, uh, or, or is we, 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 we're, we're running our own RPC node, but as far as 
interaction with the smart contracts. That's you and the smart contract. Tetra okay. itself is not is at is only facilitating that automation for you. Gotcha. You know, nobody has access to oversee or shut things off. Though no, it's completely right, right, right. And, and but the like the control flow in in terms of like you can do X at Y time or for X or Y person. Is that something that comes from like a backend that you guys provide? Like how exactly do you like, so let's just go through a scenario. Like, so I, I'm, you know, I, I want to do something for somebody else. Um, what prevents me from doing that thing too early or too late? Is it just like a signature that I get from Tetra or like how, how do I get that information? Uh, you would, uh, you will basically Atlas will allow you to, uh, I mean, Stratus will allow you to um, uh, search through or the uh, uh, utilize a smart contract availability on any given uh, protocol that exists on the mm -hmm. blockchain. And then you would then have the opportunity to set parameters, uh, if then type statements, uh, uh, percentages, you know, certain you know price points, whatever you're trying to do in your in your activity right. uh, that you would set up and you have complete control over that uh, activity. And nobody else has any. It's all you in the in the code. We're just offering tools to do so. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And so like, um, does like you, so, um, okay. And, and so it, if, if that's true, like I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, cause, cause I, I, I'm, I'm just very new to tech trial like, or like about you guys a couple weeks ago at this point. Um, so I appreciate you explaining to a noob like me, but, um, is it that like you, uh, like where is the, like, permission given like do, do users have to de deposit their own to their tokens into a contract to be modified later or um, um no well so what happens is when you you, you start off a tetra with this which is called a smart wallet that we, we are having it's a to tell tetra wallet it's just something that's your wallet your keys your coins the whole nine yards and you that's where your permissions are given to activate throughout uh the, the blockchain you gotcha. see, point so it's it's through that technology allows you to interact uh, in, in a way that you don't have to manually do anything after that point, which you set up one time, you're done. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah and, and so, and, and you can make it immutable if you choose to. It's your, your right. choice. You can make a strategy immutable. It can't touch it. It just runs until it doesn't. You know, something right. happens in blockchain. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so, does that like does that wallet hold like to get like a hash posted to it from the originating user, like constraining the inputs of people who want to do certain things, or like how how, how does the well, to... nobody else can mess with it. It's just like any other wallet. Nobody can mess with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's just a wallet, like any other wallet, the MetaMask or your know, Rabi or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, that's but the best I can explain it. There's nobody nobody can manipulate the wallets, do anything to them. It's your keys, your your coins. It's all your stuff. Yep. It's just we're just a software service, and so we're giving you the tools to do what you want on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. You know, as you see fit. Mm -hmm. Nobody has any access to anybody else's manipulate or anything like that. I see. So, so other people don't run uh, operations for your address. It's more that no, you run software to monitor the state of the chain, and then that software will is you know I guess automated to do certain actions at the, the appropriate time. But but you control all, right. all of it. Right. Okay. Cool. Got now, it. On the, there's one caveat. You could then. Um, and we're working on this too, just in the, in the background, working on pooled strategy concepts. You can, people can pool their resources together to run, mm -hmm. let's say, an ARB or a HANA strategy or whatever. Sure. Those are possible, but that's a different mechanic because then you create, you get, have a permissionless pool that you can enter in. That's, but that's, yeah. but it's on top of Tetra. That's not Tetra itself. You see, it's that's within the the the, um, uh, the Stratus, you know, right, right, right. mechanics. So that's what we're doing. So there's a lot of opportunity here. So. What we're doing manually now on the blockchain with the clicking buttons and going from page to page, providing liquidity, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. and uh, managing liquidity, all the things we do in bank, buying and selling, all that's just going to be pre-set up uh, through different strategies to do it at, at your leisure, at your price point, your gas fees, whatever. And the only thing the user has to do is once they have a smart wallet, they load up their gas and they load up the appropriate amount of fees in for Tetra charges, which are stable coins, which you'll know ahead of time before you deploy the strategy. Sure. And sure. you just launch it. And then after that, within the strategy, strategies can be designed <clears throat> to take yield to keep that flow going without the add new the person add new fees as they go. So, right. so, the, so you could always have it being perpetual, so to speak. Right, right. No, I got you. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that uh, that clarification. Got a couple of uh, questions in the chat here. Coin critic, buy instant three comments had API hacks at a risk for losing your coins. 
I assume you're talking about Tetra this on this context. I mean, you know, um, since we have our own uh, our own RPC and stuff, I mean, it, it we're, we're no that Tetra itself is not a, a place where you hold your stuff; it's a tool. So you're still holding on on a blockchain through a smart contract and a wallet you own. So there's no, the only unless you lose your keys, that's the way it's hackable. And we have ways to deal with that too, uh, through different the squirrel swint sentinel strategy and stuff like that. So API hacks shouldn't really affect uh, a tetra. Now, if it affects a protocol you're using, that's different. We can't control that. It, is it when you connect tetra? Is it uh, like you just connect it? Like a lot of other dApps, you just hit connect and MetaMask approve, all that stuff. And then, then you can see what we're seeing on the screen here on, on the right-hand side about your assets. Or yeah, is yeah, it like yeah, the, you, 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 would, you, would, you would enter into Atlas through the uh, login mechanism that, that will be available when it, when it launches. And we'll see that here in that's testnet shortly. And then you start your own you know, Tetra wallet and go from there. Um, and then you can then have Tetra then link to other like cold storage wallets that you may have or any MetaMask wallet you choose and move stuff around. Um, and most of us will at first probably need that at, uh, or, or manually do it at first to bring to our smart wallet then take our funds and then uh, use them in DeFi. I guess the question is, is that the wallet, is it, are the wallets hosted? When you say move them around, is it, because I'm thinking a normal DAP, you just hit connect. You say, okay, now that the website can read it, but is there like a, the, are there wallets that are being hosted on the back no, end somewhere? No, no, no. Over? I mean, it just, it just, when I say, when I say move around, I mean your assets on the wallet, whatever your tokens you have, you may just transfer them to your Tetra wallet. So then it can then deploy them or yeah. you can have Tetra move it from that wallet. You have to get permissions and stuff to set it up in, in subways, to, in subsections, but to have it do stuff for you. That, that'd be for something example, to have Tetra do. I was thinking just the difference between exchange hack and just a like a, a website hack, hack that hold, hosted DAP. For example, exchange hack, they have their own internal wallets and stuff, you know, use their website, move everything around. You don't have MetaMask connected to Coinbase, for example. So much more serious if that gets hacked because they can control your account, they can swap things around. If, you know, 2FA and stuff can help with that. But otherwise, much more serious than if you just have a DAP that's just communicating with, uh, you know, just hosted on a website. Yeah, then if it gets hacked, it's not like they can move it around. The website's not doing anything. It's just showing you all the stuff. It's allowing you to, to you know, click buttons that send exactly. uh, different functions and stuff. So it sounds like Tetris in the second bucket. Yeah. Yeah, and so I, I guess, does that mean that the smart contract, uh, the, the smart contract wallet, is that for gas optimizations and the future allowing other people to do things um, set up? Yes, yes, there will be availability in the future for gas optimizations, and as well as um, uh, you know, building out on on, strat on Stratus for developers in the future as well. That's going to be rolled out in the future. So cool. those are those will be features will be made available uh, later on. So uh, people who don't have a whole lot of code based code knowledge can still build applications on top of Tetra using the Stratus drag and drop and allow you to you know you know launch tokens uh, come up with all kind of DeFi uh protocols and all kind of good stuff like that so that, that's yeah. coming in the future as well just yeah. not at first right right sounds great question here too why did all og hexagons tell me to sell my ehex that's a good question <laughs> all all is a strong word i don't i don't think i saw all of them uh taken one side or the other but uh, yeah anyway. i think that i think the best word is exuberance just they were very excited for Pulse to be here. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I don't personally see eHex going away. Um, I don't know about you, about you guys. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I've talked about it before. You know, I, I sort of go back to the simplest way of saying it's cheapest T-shares, but then I also, oops, looks like you lost, uh, lost him for a sec. Uh, it looks like, I also think about it at, I was thinking about this today, actually, I was driving around. I was like, you know what? It's not just steepest teachers. I think I do optimize one way or the other. I think I do optimize for uh, uh, hex on pulse chain. And we're back. Um, yeah. Did you hear the last? Uh, yep. Yep. I saw her. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think I just wait pulse chain hex higher, in my opinion, I think, or what I'm, what I do with my bags and stuff. Um, sure. But I, I definitely, I definitely haven't stopped staking or, or buying eHex. I'll, I'll say it like that. I, I don't. I treat them mostly the same, except I put a little bit more weight towards PX. Sure. How about you, Neil? Uh, same thing. Yeah, I look. I look at um, uh, 
I look at them the same as the same thing, but you know, PX is cheaper to operate on, so it's just it's more efficient. And that's just that's all I look at it right now. Um, I think I uh, only go ahead. I just I've been so busy building and working on stuff. I haven't really thought about my bags. I just, you know, I'm trying to get the future ready. You know, my my pa- I already I did my my hex is done in the past. I'm staked. I'm good. So I just accumulate other other assets right now for and opportunities, including hex. I just look I look at different things because you know we're about to you know we're going to change the paradigm on 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 blockchain here shortly through Tetra. So I'm kind of get ready for that. You know, it's very important. You always have a good answer to this question because people be asking it forever and ever and ever. It's never going to go away until we have Hex V2, which combines both of them, just like Hedron is going to happen. Never know. I am throwing that up. I, I say it. I say it tongue in cheek. I'm like, if there ever, I, and again, I said this before on streams, like if there ever is a Hex V2 and uh, Hedron V2 works out pretty well, um, I think uh, Richard might be like, oh, that's pretty cool, you know? Maybe you should be able to stake, stake them both on the same platform, and a lot of that goes away. And EHEX is future is kind of set and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, pure speculation. But if there ever is one, I think that would be interesting. That's right. Uh, good. Uh, yeah, agree. Talk- yeah. yeah, it's also I was thinking about today too is the the reasons or for example when people say oh I got wrecked I uh, bought hex you know maybe you bought it at twenty cents thirty cents forty cents fifty cents. You bought not near the top, maybe you bought in the middle, whatever it is. It's way, way below that right now, price wise. However, when I look at my hex stakes and I've seen them go way up and I've seen them go way down, I don't think, oh, I'm wrecked. I, and I think, and I'm I always, I'm just trying to think about that today. Why, why isn't, why do I treat if I make a trade that goes poorly? Why do I treat that that differently? Or I join a yield farm that goes poorly, or I provide liquidity and at the wrong ratio and that goes poorly. All those other plays, why do I treat that differently? Then my hex, my hex stakes. When I look at them, if I'm staked for five, 10, 15 years, I don't feel wrecked. I, I just think it's psychology for us, you know, as, as we look at what we have as far as you know these 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 things on the blockchain. Um, and if if you understood hex when you bought it, then none of this really matters because most of you you should be staking for long term. Um, even and if you're trying to do like short term staking, you, you know, it was a really t- tough idea on Ethereum because of the gas fees. And I'm sure we're going to talk about that in a minute and how to solve some of that. But, um, but even Pulse Chain, though, though it's cheap now, if, if bull run hits, you know, and Pulse Chain 10x is in price or 20x is in price, that means your gas fees are going to go up that much as well. So that's something to consider uh, as you look to the future, maybe not now in a year or maybe two, but in 10 years. Is pulse chain still going to be super cheap, so to speak, or not? Yeah, well, that, it goes back to the value. Dip catcher said this a million times too. I totally agree that if pulse chain is cheap forever, that means the PLS price isn't doing so well, probably. Uh, or we have some technical revolution that Vitalik Big Brain or Air Devs uh, or, or anyone else uh, comes up with something cool and it's like, hey, now we have a way we, we beat supply and demand we beat the market cycle we have something to make cheap fees everywhere maybe but until then uh the value of the network d- depends a lot on the value of the coin these days mm. hex payday is trying its best it's just yeah. not, not happening so like me it sounds like me last week <laughs> you know you know at least uh i think when you turn the the audio or the video off it, it helped but uh yeah it, it was fine i think it it you gave us a good intro and then we had some good green room banter and then me and Stu uh, got into that was a great stream i really enjoyed really enjoyed that stream friday was, yeah i mean y'all you didn't really need me because i mean Stu had all the technical answers you really needed to, i mean like three times Stu's like oh, well if neil was here if neil was here <laughs> <laughs> well i mean yeah yeah we, we all have a little, a little rule to play you doing these different things and focus on stuff i mean we got pretty much to change a computer at all times coding. <laughs> hey, I, I know how it feels to change computers. I, I have a different one for Telegram, a different one for everything else. I like that uh, segmentation. Uh, yeah. That's a, oh, not that one. That's the wrong link. Post the stream link. By the way, anyone in the chat wants to come in, I see Sloth in there, but he may just be hanging out. Uh, let me uh, let me post the Mentra because I want to talk about that. Have you saw it? Have you been keeping up with the Mentra token launch yeah. lately? Yeah, I actually last night, Right before I had to go somewhere, and uh, there was uh, I saw it launch the token launch. I saw this is pretty interesting, so I was watching it and stuff, and watching the price action. I, I personally didn't get into Mentor, just I just I was already kind of tapped out at the time, and so I said, "Well, this is pretty cool. If, if Jordan pulls off, be good." I mean, you know, everybody likes NFTs and stuff. We're in that we were into that thing, and I saw the price. I said, "Huh, that's interesting." So, but 
like everything else, I, I predict that with all the sacrifices, it's, it's, so far it's been true. Every every project of sacrifice has uh, had basically had issues with price price action on the front end. That's just everybody dumps. I mean, we were the same way. People dumped it first. And of course, we've been so far since our initial token launch that it's been bought back up and we're all now in good shape. In fact, we're up, Tetra's up now today. I don't know why, but it's up. So Tetra's up. I got to see that. Yeah, but usually but it's a pretty stable, pretty, pretty sideways, but in a, in a good way. But it went up like a, a pretty good chunk in the last couple of days. Um, so. And the, the irony is we don't care because we're not trying to sell a token. That's not our point. It's not where we exist. We're software as a service. So um, we don't care. We don't, we don't care what the token price does. I mean, we don't care if people buy it or not. I mean, that's, that's up to them. So we're here just building, you know, you know, tools for people to use. That's our focus. That, that yeah. Did you, uh, go ahead. sorry, go ahead. I'll say that. I'll say this real quick. I think it's one of the coolest things. And I have, I, I think I already posted a video on this about, why the price doesn't matter like in a very specific way for Tetra because uh, you're trying to accumulate it to get more, you know, to print more money and like the, the, the token price is so, it's so interesting where it like totally focuses away from speculation and towards utility. That's one say that's fascinating. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, that's definitely true. Um, yeah, uh, but the utility is mostly just as staking, right? There's, does it get burned over time or I guess it gets bought and burned back, is that right? No, it's static. It's a static supply. Period. That's okay. It. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess like why why did you choose to have a token is my question. Because like I I I understand the like why many people do it because like people need to raise funds. But was there any you know reason outside of that? No, that's pretty much the need need to raise funds to develop, like every other project. Um, and, and we but. The token itself was never ever going to be part of the functionality of the system. It's, it was literally a fee generate fee sharing tool, and that's it. That's all it's ever been uh, associated with. So, oh, gotcha. So, so yeah. the the fee the fee sharing is is that how like what's the mechanism for distributing that? Is that just uh, every time a a, a trade or, or every time a, a, a value is moved through Tetra from point A to point B, a small fee is is charged to the person. So you're in DeFi, you're moving things around uh, through some different you know, farms or whatever. You charge a fee every time you move it because it's doing it automatically for you where you're asleep and stuff. And that okay, small yeah. fee is then distributed to the proportional holdings of the of the token holders in the staking pool. Okay, so so that is the utility then. Mm -hmm. Like you get yeah, more of it from fees. Okay, sorry. I, yeah. I, thought said, I, thought, I thought you said it didn't have a utility. Well, I mean, the utility is it just earns fees from the system. That's all it does. Gotcha, gotcha. It's cool. very simple, very like, very uh, s subtle of, of how it works like that. It's like literally the utility is earning the fees. Like it, it is literally just a money, it's a revenue share system that prints money, literally prints stables. Um, and then the other the interesting part, so I've asked this question before too, why why was there pulse chain sacrifice? Why was there pulse X sacrifice? If there's no expectation, why is there any sacrifice? Like other than, you know, of course, raise funds for debt. Like you can frame it like that to, you know, resources, you know, servers cost money, software cost money, all this stuff. But also the factor that people put more emphasis and are more likely to pay attention to something that isn't free. That's why you see sure. every airdrop thing, everything that, that like, you know, a lot of airdrops get dumped immediately. <laughs> it's so funny. I, I was thinking of this, the, the, the PX, everyone, the, the narrative to, a lot of narratives going around with the hex, but it was like, oh, PX is the copy. Pop, you know, even, I've said this before. Copies usually get dumped, and maybe the price goes back up afterwards. But airdrops usually get dumped, and then then they they play out in the market. But to get people, you know, why is there pull sex sacrifice? Why is there pull chain sacrifice? Why couldn't it just been freed, given away to hex holders, or given away to Ethereum holders, or all that stuff? Other than the copies, they were. It was to get people to be motivated to build and otherwise. Like that, that is the powerful mechanic behind it. Well, everybody's yeah. got skin in the game now, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. they they have they they have a, 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 a basically a, a selfish reason to utilize the, the chain now because they have yeah. money in it. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I definitely. I could definitely see that. Um, yeah, the, I think the biggest criticism that I've received so far for X Payday has been that there is no token, and therefore you're just not going to get people engaged uh, for exactly that reason, um, because there's just no means for anybody to 
pay attention to it or no 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 reason to so yeah it's, it's put me kind of kind of a quandary there <laughs> well I, I think there i mean there's plenty of examples of websites that are very successful and platforms are very gopulse.com there's no as far as i know sure. there's no token there knock on wood you never know but um, I think if you, if you just provide enough value and people understand it and they have a reason to use it, not saying, I mean, obviously like I want to get into you presenting that picture. Cause I think more people understand that, that, uh, that piece of, of hex payday, like the, the more, the more you won't even, you know, the less you'll think about needing a token and more you'll think about, wow, this is like inherently useful because people use it to solve some problem. So I think getting that message out, you know, not every platform needs a token. Yeah. yeah many yeah, of them, many of them don't need a token to have one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely been my experience so far. Is like, um, you know, just focus on the message of you know reducing hex and state fees because they're 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 already two tokens interacting at that point. You know, um, you know the gas fee that you're paying with as well as hex. You know, you need a third to be in the mix. Dude, I mean, I mean, yeah. do you, do you, you want to share something? Do you want do you want to kind of walk people through? It? I know we did a demo day, but I, I think there's you know plenty of people here that I, probably weren't there last I, time. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't have anything really prepared. Um, but I, I can certainly you know answer any questions about it, or just like go through like a feature set if you wanted. Um, like if there were yeah. uh, questions that you had maybe from last time, or I can just like rattle off the right. list of things. I, that... I, I mean, I think you kind of pointed to the, the biggest the biggest value product. Like what is the biggest value? Like what can why why would I ever go to this website? Why would I not go to go.acosta.pro or go to um, uh, get a go, go, uh, go to hex.com slash stake. Like, why would I come here? What is the value prop uh, for me and everyone else using it? Yeah, I mean, it's two factor. I mean, it's it's gas savings and it's time savings. So you, by putting your uh, uh, stakes into this not yet finished con set of contracts, you can, uh, you know, have your um, stakes ended for you and restarted for you. Uh, if you just put up the appropriate tips, and you can uh, even uh, not forget to uh, mint your Hedron and now Communis. Um, so that's 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 been a good development recently. I was actually working with Kodiak, and he was, he was one of the people who uh, leveled that uh, um, uh, criticism, I guess, of the of the current state. Is that you know, lack of a token. Um, and uh, yeah. So he's been actually really instrumental in with with the integration, um, and I think this is actually the first community integration. So that's been kind of interesting too. Um, so I'm not sure if it's <laughs> going to turn into anything, but um, yeah, um, yeah, you can start stakes for your cold wallets from this stuff. You can um, start stakes for other people. I think I think the most interesting thing is like that you can start stakes for other people, and therefore you know you can create an onboarding tool. Um, where you can just hand stakes out to people like you could just you could set up a system where you could scan your qr code and you know start a stake for somebody else and you know they can just go here and end it whenever it's done or put a tip in or you can put a tip in. you, you can put tips in for strangers even um so that's that's kind of an interesting thing too um yeah it's 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 still kind of in flux and <laughs> not not all the way finished but we're getting there do you have something new you muted I just was just just thinking how to automate this. <laughs> yeah, no, I my mind I'd, around it. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love for you guys to automate something like this. Um, I I think I kind of went uh, at this from the opposite direction as Tetra in that like it's less about you being able to manage your own stuff and more about everybody else being able to manage one thing, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, solving that problem with this very complicated contract. Um, but also uh, kind of elegant in a lot of ways. Um, I think it was the right move, at least for, for that time. I've, I've got a few other contracts that, that I've been working on as well. Um, basically a, a means of you being able to like isolate your own uh, stakes and like allow people to do certain like very specific parameters uh, inputs with them. Um, so you could like have people on a cer certain day and, you know, end your stake and then restart, you know, uh, for a different number of days or something like that. Um, I've, I've got a pared down version in the current contracts, but, um, but yeah, basically the, the whole point is to take it. Have, have, I'm, I'm guessing you run into EIP 2929 pricing, um, mm -hmm. uh, Neil. And yeah, it's basically just a matter of taking uh, advantage of that for, uh, for stakes. Uh, I can actually run the, let me see if I can run the foundry tests real quick. Um, okay. I think the most interesting thing that strikes me is starting stakes for cold wallets. Like that's yeah, yeah. Didn't yeah. even think about that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So 
Um, yeah, and and just, for, just for just for Tetra Automation real quick, I, I was just thinking onboarding idea, would it be possible to, question for both of you, would it be possible to automate this in a way, I don't know if you'd need Tetra for it, just, I just keep thinking of like some way to just print a bunch of onboarding QR codes or, or something that's, that you could just give out that it, it's not like, cause I've, you know, you give out liquid hex, you don't know if they're gonna stake it. You gotta, you gotta do the whole thing. But if you hand out stakes, if you hand out like 15 year stakes and someone's like, oh, in 15 years or 10 years, yeah, five, I, whatever it is, if I, you hand I, them that, that's maybe that's cooler. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I commented on somebody's um, video the other day. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, where he was, he created, yeah, here it is. Uh, let me send it to you in the chat. Uh, you can pull it up. Um, he's basically, he basically just created these uh, stake, stake hex dot today uh, printouts. Um, yeah, pull that up. Party. Yeah, go ahead and play that real quick. So yeah, I don't have any sound, but yeah, it's playing. Yeah, you might recognize that as the stake yeah. hex the UI. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that, I thought that was really cool and reminded me of uh, something that Bitcoin people did back in the day. And so, if you scroll down, you'd probably find uh, my one of my responses at some point. Um, no, Are you one of the ads or no? Okay, <laughs> that looks cool, by the way. Yeah, yeah, there I am oh. right there. So one can state start start stakes for other wallets. Meaning, if you can print the private key without exposing it, you can scan a QR code public address on the bath back and. Uh, start a stake for that address, making that stake a reality when it's handed out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's kind of kind of a cool concept. Um, but it's basically yeah. just what Bitcoiners did back in the day, you know. Yes, those stakes instead of liquid, like I, that's right. awesome. See, yeah, we, we one, got we what... got some stuff we're working on too in the background for Hex. Just talk, can't talk about it now, but we got some pretty good things for Hex in the future too. So, awesome. um, I mean, just this thing, there's so much we can do with Tetra that people don't realize the, the power. And we all want the price to go up, but in reality, only the price of hex goes up is people buy it. And so we're looking at ways to encourage that. Yeah, definitely. Dude, that's super cool. See, that's why these conversations are helpful too. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, in, instead of like, you know, uh, needing needing to incentivize people to use it by giving them a token, and again, nothing nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of platforms to do it. There'll be plenty more people right. to do it. But if you're able to show them like, hey, you you need this, you can use this for some purpose, like whatever you're trying to do, this will help you do it better or enable some new situation like onboarding, automating onboarding. Like that's that's yeah. something I can see that'd be super useful. I, I I hope it didn't come off as me thinking that people shouldn't be releasing tokens. I <laughs> no, that'd be super clear. Yeah. I'm not against people re releasing tokens at all. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Not at all. No, this, this is this awesome, man. I'm like literally like demo day. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't get to see this point either. So that's, I'm, I'm more intrigued than, than even I was uh, on that day. Very cool. Mike Barty, shout out to Mike Barty doing some cool stuff here yeah. too. Well, imagine, imagine a scenario. This is hypothetical. Just, I don't want to, I don't want to show my hand too much, but a hex stake can be wrapped, right? As we know with Hedron, we, we learned that yep. it's possible. And then if you can wrap something, you could put an NFT. Right. Yep. NFT then typically just sits there, but we know that Power City's NFTs are associated with something that earns has value. You know, that you can you can you know earn yield from. Mm -hmm. So, what if you had a place you could stake an NFT to earn yield that had a hex stake in it? Yeah, I'm all for it. I've actually got a, a file in the stake mm -hmm. manager here. I'll, I'll I'll give you a link real quick, um, where I've gotten a this uh the stake uh, sorry the, the stake to be able to transfer between addresses as well mm -hmm. so you can put a flag put a... oh it's in the chat i drop again yeah all right he's he's, he's still there it just says the device not connected so it must be uh he's still here he'll be back so let's explain what it is state manager Okay. Hmm. Yeah, but the ability to transfer stakes and ownership of you know stakes is important. I'm glad you know that you know that, that technology has just been developed. So, um, but I'm looking at personally trying to have NFTs have more value than just you know monkey pictures and stuff. Yes. Hey, sorry. Where where did I drop off? 
Uh, just brought up state manager. You're going to explain why there's no intro here. It says what it is. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. So if you scroll back up um, and go into contracts and then transferable stake manager, um, you can see uh, that there's basically a point where you can have competing NFTs and transfer the stake, the underlying stake beneath between them. So you could have a stake that allows you to like you can just build an NFT system on here, and maybe maybe like maybe Hedron wants to build one and maybe some other you know staking system like a wallet wants to build one um and then but you want to transfer you know you you want to start earning you know from from hedron and then maybe you want to start earning from uh, the wallet and so this transferable stake manager file allows you to transfer from one nft to another you can tell that if it's enabled in the nft contract you could transfer that one stake that underlying asset from the uh, nft itself to like the, the from from one NFT, nft contract to another so yeah. I, I thought that that was kind of kind of interesting no it's, that's that is cool because like alex like you're going from what alex described from one jar to another basically yeah yeah yep yeah that's that's actually pretty good because i, I can see some utility there for other things too in the future. Yeah, I mean, it's we'll basically have, infinite. Like, it's, yeah. it's basically just allowing you to wrap it in whatever way you want. But the, the value just gets, you know, pushed around. Um, I, 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 I do wish, that, like, I, I think that there is a uh, probably a point where an NFT should probably just be the, you know, underlying baseline thing. But this at least allows, you know, more people if they wanted to join in on that action. Oops, uh, sorry. Uh, Neil, were you talking about earning, earning hex stakes earlier? No, I was talking about taking hex stakes and earning yield off of them. Earning not without t- not yield. hex, not not with hex terms, but other other things. Like so staking stakes. Uh huh. Interesting. Yeah, I'm working on it. It's okay. these are just things that we're we're talking about concepts because with Tetris we have a lot of tools and so and a lot of options and there's things that we can build that will allow for further de- development and advancement of DeFi, and that's what we're looking at doing and this all in the future coming up but uh, this is when, we, when i said we we're going we're changing the paradigm we are changing the paradigm of how we, how we look at blockchain you're still doing some stuff with watson inc too right same stuff same concept Told it's me. all it's all it's all wrapped up in the same understanding it's just you know, this is kind of i'm learning about this thing right now so this is pretty uh pretty neat and this adds another layer and of uh, a potential or earnings for people who have hex stakes. Could is it more? Is it like staking things that aren't tokens? Is that like the general concept? Digital assets, whatever they are, well, staking yes. assets. Hmm. Yeah, so like share. I mean, like a stake is like a digital asset, right? It's not uh, a hex yeah. stake by itself is not transferable. It's just pegged to the address that it was started with you burn it at the end or you get like you destroy the struct at the end but um but yeah you could you could like you could an, an nft basically just can wrap anything or it can you know it can hold access to anything um so yeah that's mm-hmm. that's a perfectly reasonable uh application for this yeah it's the same way kind of like power city theirs their you know their nft is the stake that earns money or yield from the system so it's that same concept except we're taking it for another level it's, you know in a different with a different mechanic obviously but that's what gave me the idea wow that is pretty cool um and that's that's what i'm saying everyone, anyone, everyone bored right now i don't know why you're bored I don't, i'm not bored maybe it's, i'm just streaming i'm talking to people i'm getting to understand all the stuff coming up because things are launching i mean metro we just looked at the chart two platforms not out yet but uh, soon um that this is this is a uh, I mean Neil Neil for two shares ah I love it I love hearing about like these new paradigms and ways of making just yield right like it's it's mm-hmm. ways how would you describe it maybe you can do that like how would you describe the things that you're most interested in working on with Tetra <laughs> oh boy um hmm, hmm, hmm. let me see it's uh let's see. I can't say because it's all proprietary. It's in secret building it for y'all. I mean, we're working on stuff. I mean, 
Red, Red, Red Squirrel will shoot me if I said some stuff, so I'm going to shut my well, mouth. But... Do, do, do you guys have any plans to open source things? Because right now it seems like Touch is pretty closed source. Is that right? um, I'm not. That's a stupid question. I, I can't answer sure. that one. Um, but no, no, we uh, we are we apply for a patent for our technology. So, hmm. gotcha. Well, the strategies are they. I mean, they're they're going to be like JSON files. Yes, right. I imagine. So they're. I mean, they'll be open. Yeah, they're open. Yeah, they're way. open. Yeah, and people can go to the blockchain and see what people are doing. It's all on chain. Nothing's being hidden. It's just that the 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 the, the uh, functionality and the, the, how Tetra works. That's all proprietary but all the strategies it's just anything you do manually on the blockchain you can do automatically so there's nothing secret there we're just are able to build things out that previously are unavailable to do because you don't have automation and that's that's where the future is coming that's the exciting part because never before you're able to do these things in such a way that you build a self-contained mini ecosystem which is a strategy so to speak that allows you then to do build on that as well and that's kind of what we're, we're excited about uh, within with the Tetra, and so we'll we'll be building several things off, probably a main concept, and work from there. And then, we, and, we, and look, we're just getting started. We're just a few guys, you know, putting our heads together. I mean, there's stuff people will come up with that's going to blow our minds. That's going to probably make our stuff obsolete in the future. And we hope so because we want people to innovate. Because through innovation is you know discovery, and and you know we all get better, and we learn more, and there's more. Then ultimately, there's more you know money going around too. Have you talked about any uh, mentor strategies yet? I can't remember. Yeah. Um, early on, the way I understood mentor was it was if you state it, you earn pulse. And I think that's that's about all I understood about it. So it was just I looked at it as a yield bearing token. That's all I, I kind of and I put it in the, in that in that bucket of things. And I did a strategy a while back showing people that if they can use Tetra to collect these type of tokens and just hold them and then or stake them or whatever and then earn yield as passive income and then use that income for further compounding what what are the can, can you go over that quickly too just what are the different you know if you i imagine you've, you went through the different things bucketed them different ways yield bearing otherwise what are there just like some main categories of tokens in their ecosystem well I, all right so you got i look at this way and this is and this is my view of how i look at the blockchain stuff you have things like hex which is when richard was right it's a bitcoin with proof of work chain change i mean it is really a store of value right and you get more of it if you stake it okay it's its, it's own category it's kind of but there's other things similar to that but that's kind of the category of yielding of itself okay so the thing gives you more of itself over time and then you have things like uh like power city the watt token it gives you yield because of utility of fees paid by users and tetris the same way so it's it's a a fee based system so yield comes through fees not uh not paid in the original thing, not in Watt token, but in Pulse or Pulse X or whatever. And for Tetra, it's stablecoin. Uh, and for Mentor, it's Pulse and stuff like that. Um, like, well, I think, I think I'm saying win win pays out in win win tokens, but you can also get paid if you use them to stake all your like loans and stuff like that. A uh, loan token is another one. You can stake it. You can earn other things beside loan and, and the earn token the same way. So you, you have different categories of tokens out there. And they all have different ways you need to think about how you want to uh, strategize the um, the placement within a, a loop, so to speak. So what's back to maximize your yield. And that depends on each person's, how much how many tokens they own, um, and then how willing, they, how willing they are to take take some some risks if they want to or and all those type of things. So it's, it's, it's a it's a broad range. That's why it's an if uh, a Tetra is infinite use case, just given the, the number of, uh, of options we have out there on the blockchain. Yeah, so so yield bearing. I mean, tax you tax. Uh, sorry, hex. Uh, you stake hex, earn more hex. Some things you stake, earn o other tokens. Um, what are? Is there any other interesting, you know, tokenomic games? Uh, do you think Tetra is going to automate? Um, I think it'll make far yield farming with the farms pretty. Uh, probably a lot, lot more uh, uh, dynamic for people. Things like uh, with, with the you know ink farms on on, on Pulse X and then like things like Spark Swap's got a farm and you know, Daytona Finance and a few others that are out there. People who interact with those things can uh, move the liquidity around and try to earn these other tokens. But um, I think I was talking to the guys at Pulse Bitcoin about this. The, the trick is, and this is where a lot of these protocols have trouble, is it's hard not to have a dump token. It's really hard because where's the value coming from and how do people get out? 
So our solution was we charge stable coins as fees and we distribute to the people. There's nothing to dump left. The stable coin is the final thing. So we don't have to worry about it. So you get paid in stable coins if you stay Tetra. There's not a, a other token you have to get that to then dump to nothing to get to get out and, and, and take your profits. And that's, that's a big difference. And it's, so when protocols design stuff, they need to be really careful about how to close that loop. It's just it's a design thing. You know, you got to understand what's going on. And some have done better than others. But if you notice, though, like, like think things, Hex is a good example. I mean, if if today, boom, nobody bought any more Hex. They said they just completely stopped buying Hex. But everybody kept selling. The price will always go down. I mean, you can't help it. It's just, it's just math. And so Hex requires a, a, a community to keep the, the ball rolling as well as to encourage other people to get involved because they're missing out on a lot of gains, a lot of yield, especially for 15-year stakes and stuff. Um, hmm. But whereas, you know, other tokens who have other types of mechanics, maybe see some, some of the farms, you know, have a, have a token that they, they give to people, but that token has no value or it's sold for something else, it's inevitably going to go to zero. It's just the way, it's just math. I mean, you, you can't deny the math. It's just a, is that the, is that the key to tokenomics is like finding a way to, for people to play like healthy games that prevent them in some way from selling or discouraging, making, putting their price on selling, I guess. Yeah. You, I mean, and then we try it with, with, you know, we try to re reduce supply. That's one re way we do it. We try to buy and burn all these type of mechanics doing that. And that works to a certain point, but at the end of the day, People who, who want to take profits, they have to find a way to take a profit out. And if the token has no means to, uh, to no you other utility other than to be sold for something else, it would be inevitably sold down. That's just that you, you can look at all, look at all the price charts and all these tokens. That's what they do. They just go down. That are yield tokens. And so it's good to have like things like Mitchell who get pulse out because pulse is the fee you pay in the system. Or with Watt token, you're paying you know, you're paying pulse X and, and, and pulse in whatever means, and that's what's being distributed to the people who want so those are the things that then people can sell their, their pulse for whatever but at least they give something that like gas tokens and things that have other utilities that they can therefore you know repurpose restake and stuff like that but look at the incentive token it's as of now it's a dump token because it has no utility so until it has utility people will always dump it because unless it's just going to hold it and speculate it's really not but a glorified mean to token at the moment yeah, speculation of yeah. well, I think in, ink is a little bit interesting because it is RH coin technically, right? It is maybe his least favorite, as in, in his words, I guess, but it is tied to the RH ecosystem and in a way it's tied to the health of you know PulseX liquidity risk. It's it's got that thing to it. It's pot, it's literally tied to the hip to PulseX uh, in a way, not you know figuratively speaking at least. So yeah, and, and we all hope that he does something with it. I mean, I really want him to do something with it, but until he does, so what else can you do with it? That's the problem we're at right now. Uh, we're going to work on solving some of that for people ourselves. But again, you know, until there's uh, something out there, you can take your incentive token and use it for or whatever your your the, the quote unquote dump token may be for the protocol. We're I'm, I'm personally that's one of my pet projects is try to solve these problems for, for these these protocols to give them something other than just a, a go to zero token because it, it's it, it, that's what kills DeFi, really it, it, that's when you you have the, the initial people get their money everybody comes in later they're just they're uh, you know just lapping up the crumbs is, yeah, is that I mean, where it falls i was gonna say does that where it falls flat the spec like they all turn into if they don't have something holding them up other than speculation they all fall back to speculation and when speculation goes away zero is 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 a target yeah go ahead XP. yeah i was just gonna say that um i i I think I forgot what I was going to say. Shit. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the allowing people to have mechanisms like that is definitely a good thing. Um, just, I mean, in, just in terms of like slaying Moloch, um, in terms of the coordination failure of, I mean, what we were talking about before, either having a token or not having a token. Um, I, I don't, oh, yeah, now I remember what I was going to say. Um, do, do, you, do you guys ever... Uh, think that the like an, an, another way to um, pursue utility could just be to focus on a, a small number of tokens I mean I, I know it's not going to be possible just because anybody can launch their own token but I mean if you were to just imagine for a moment like what what do you think would happen if more people started putting their the yield of the contracts that they deploy 
back toward POS, POSX, I mean, ink token, like what if people just chose, you know, chose to do that instead? I had this thought the other day, I had a tweet that I sent out, um, but yeah, I just didn't really. It, it kind of makes a case, does that, so what, the first thing I think of is, does that make the case that earning, I don't know, I can see it both ways because my first thought was, okay, that, is that the case being made for earning something other than the incentive token or earning something other than the token you're staking is if you earn, uh, you know, a blue chip in some way, hex pulse or pulse X or something. Yeah. You can dump it, but also you're earning it. So it's coming from somewhere. So it's like kind of like a circular feedback loop or, or it could be at least, I don't know. There's a lot, there's a lot in that. What, what do you think? You know? All right. <laughs> All right. So it, it, this, this is the, the thing. So if you, if people take yield and buy say the, the, the gas coin, or, or Pulse X, which again has no utility now, just buy and burn, right? So until it has utility, I mean, it, we're kind of, at this point, we're kind of stuck. But if you want to buy these blue chips or hex, and the hex you can stake, right? So there's, 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 there's something to be said by that. But what if you design a system to where, and I think this is where Tetra probably solved the problem is your, your, your yields coming, a yield needs to come from fees, first of all, not come from, speculation that's that's right, important right. or 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 penalties or anything like that. it needs to be it needs to be user interaction it's, it's, absolutely yeah. you know the fees need to pay for the system um and then those fees are distributed to then the token holders in some form of, of thing but we found out the stable coins are probably the best bet only because it, it's the, it's the final thing everybody wants to get out that's what they have to have to get out right um, yeah. and then you can then take those stable coins and buy pulse by pulse x and hex if that's what you chose sure um that that seems to be a, a, a more uh, uh I, I guess you know, even approach as far as dollars and as people's psychology think they think about that stuff but now if if but you just say you say you're you want to pay yield out in hex and that's well, great. I mean, it, it, means it, it doesn't necessarily have to be out in hex i'm just saying like what if people just like focused on you know uh you know just Re rewarding people with the like you know, small subset of it could be you know USDC USDT or you know Pulse X POS it just like was constrained to just those like would that would that push the needle at all in this ecosystem? well I think the harness strategy does that if you think about it how it's how it's constant how it's you know, designed is you take your loan you buy more of the same thing you buy the Pulse Pulse X whichever side you're on and that does that and that to push the price up. Um, and so then you could take a portion of that yield or blow it by hex too, if you want to buy the other, other the third blue chip, right? So those things are possible, those type of strategies uh, within the system. So, I, and I think once once we have all this stuff automated, I think it'd be a lot easier for people to, to, to use because they just literally go in and click, click a few buttons and they're running these strategies and they're buying the blue chips automatically through yield earns and loans or whatever, where, where sure, the means sure. are. And I think that's, and that's what's coming. And I think that's what we, we don't realize we, we need to be patient. So as soon as we launch and get our stuff out there and start building these things, people realize, wow, this is awesome. Now I'm automatically buying my pulse or automatically buying my hex. Yeah. yeah. Does that, does that make Tetra security because you guys are paying out in a different token and somebody has to swap to get into that token or like how, how does, how does that work exactly? We don't care if you don't, if you don't mind me asking. Oh, we, we just don't, don't. We just don't care because uh, we're based out of Scotland, so we don't give a flap about the SEC. Gotcha. Nice. <laughs> Great. Yeah, we, we, we just, it doesn't matter to us. Um, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's irrelevant about that. But what for us is like when we do all this stuff for everybody, people can utilize it. Then they can then. Um, I think we're, we're going to be able to help push these blue chips up by automate processes. The processes people can utilize to accumulate more through whatever whatever their choice is. And, yeah. the loan, and the loan and the loan and these the loan programs are in the power and, and liquid loans are going to be like really big factors in that. I was uh, thinking that removing the making making the token that you earn a stable kind of does remove. There is no. It's funny. It's like you get rewarded, but there's no there's no dump token scenario. Like the stables aren't aren't a, aren't a dump token that's going to affect anything else you have. Nope. So. And you can put them in other strategies and make money off of them. Yeah, is it so? The rolling aspect too, rolling your, hmm, 
because I know a lot of this, you know, people may use platforms, take leverage, take that, go use something else. They may be earning incentives in one way or another, whether they're stables or incentive tokens, whatever it is, and then taking that and either selling it or rolling into something else. How, yeah, maybe can you talk about the different strategies to, for, for, for you to be able to roll stuff in Tetra, you know, ink, ink farms, for example, earn ink, roll it into more ink farms. Like, are there you, different? You do hex the same way. Imagine taking, let's say you have two sets of hex stakes, E hex and P hex run simultaneously. Assuming when Tetra goes multi chain, I'm just using this example, but you can use, even, even use Tetra to help with this. So at the end, end of the 30 days or six days where your stake ends, you've got these two endpoints. Well, you can now with, with, with uh, Tetra arb the hex. Right, whichever, and then start it over again. Right, take the difference in the yield, and then maybe you want to um, uh, uh, go to the deposit, or, uh, sell it, and, you, and, you, and go to uh, say some of the, uh, the pH ecosystem, and take leverage and all these things, and do, and do all these complicated things with the yield, and, and roll it again, do the same thing again, and next in time, and you just do it again. Those are the type of things you could do, like just hex for for instance. Now that's because you have two different hexes. Um, so those, there's a lot of possibilities out there uh, with the, the Tetra can automate to really maximize your gains uh, within the ecosystem. And then do, you can swing trade on, as well as that, too, on top of it. Do you think some of the, some of the popular um, strategies will be taking on leverage or, or loans or otherwise, you know, with, with the PH ecosystem, with liquid loans, power sale, all that stuff? Oh, yeah. That, that would be probably, I would imagine, besides normal trading, just limit orders and swing trades that people want to do besides the, the basic stuff that everybody does on, on chain and, and farm management. I think the loans and the pH ecosystem probably some of those popular things people want to, uh, because that's really all else is out there. Really think about it. There ain't much, much out there, you know, and you can accumulate other tokens. Let's even accumulate Mentra or whatever, different type of tokens that maybe bear yield. Um, but yeah, I see people really want to maximize their, uh, the, the DeFi use case for these loans. I mean, that makes the most sense. I mean, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you want all the, you can get from your loan token or your own token? You know, why wouldn't you want to arbor between PXDC and, and, and USDL, right? I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? Let Tetra do that for you. You see, that's the kind of things we're, we're looking at as well. And run the Hornet strategy and stuff like that. Yeah. It's going to talk to the chat here for a minute. Cause I've been ignoring them. Good afternoon, Ted Nelson. Uh, fast ask, can Tetra run a small island nation? It's a big question. Hmm. On the blockchain, it can. <laughs> on the blockchain. If you can do it on the blockchain, if you can see it on the blockchain, Tetra may be able to automate it. Uh, I pulled up the hex chart here too. Uh, Mr. Montefontaine says EHEX still mooning. Those green, I don't recognize green candles anymore. I kind of went colorblind in that way. But uh, can you guys tell me, is there something happening? Are we, is it really going to six now? Whoa. Whoa, what is your reactions? Like, what is going on? We're at six. Wow, Man. that is that is a huge move. Did not expect that. That's good. I mean, again, again, it's the, it's, I think we're nowhere near the macros. Again, uh, not financial advice, but did a macro stream the other day. I don't see anything lining up for, uh, for a sustainable run. Uh, I don't heard anyone seriously say that either, honestly. But um, these green candles, especially, is it, is it just, again, question. Is it just because Hex has been down so much? It's just, there's just no, was it just, did it finally hit the bottom? It's like, okay, we're at the bottom. And then every, all the big players, all the whales, everyone else buying, it's just like, all right, we're just going to go up now. It's just time to go up. I mean, honestly, time to go up? yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, like, the, what, there was like a million dollars in the Unity 3 pool at some point recently. I think I saw that. Mm -hmm. So, like, there's like nothing in the pool at this point. So, yeah, I mean, that, that makes it more scarce. Yeah, it's only $500,000 liquidity right now. So, you know, it's going to, yeah, I mean, you, ah, was the V3 pool has a gap, right? At last time I looked. So, I mean, yeah, but see, compared to, you know, yeah, let's check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Compared to V, V2 and V3 right now, if you look at, you know, like the con those concepts, V3 is really, I look at V3 as a, a whale manipulation game. That's, that's why I look at it because the whales control the, the price. And so it's really hard for the little guy to compete in V3. But V2 is a lot. Uh, a lot more equitable, I think, in the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things. I thought V2, the biggest uh, thing for that, the way the liquidity was placed, it was easier for the price to go up. You're saying it's not because of whale? or like what's No, no, the, no. The price can go up. That's fine. I don't mind. Nobody minds the price going up. But mm -hmm. because of how V3 works and you can contribute liquidity, 
the whales can manipulate the price. They have so much volume. They can move the, move the price where they want to and set up buy walls and stuff like that. So, and sell walls where you can't really do that in V2. Sure. Yeah. I, I, uh, what was this? It was at three. It was barely three the other day. I remember I, I did a stream. I did, uh, you know, it was, I did it at three. You could make with a million dollars or a million hex. You know, it was like, I went through all the numbers, went through hex calc and it was just, wow, there's amazing prices. And then that was like four days ago and it's already, already doubled. It's like, it's like we've doubled now. Just, just yeah, looks like you, are, you ca- looks like you caused the bull run. <laughs> you know, you know, I tried that, you know, if I'm going to have some utility, I try to have in multiple areas, <laughs> including positive for price in a, uh, just, just by being happy, just by streaming. How about that? Nothing else. Perfect. Um, so I had a question on, I don't know what TRS is, but somebody asked this test different between Tetra. Yeah, here we go. Russ, what's the difference between Tetra and other word tokens like TRS? I'm not sure what TRS is either. So I'm not, okay. I'm kind of, I'm kind of out of loop on that one. Oh, I see. It's, it's, uh, it's this one. I imagine. Did not see that until now. Okay. Oh, okay. So reflect oh, any, any well, reflection tokens, then charge it in and out tax. Uh, I, I'm assuming that, that they have that buying and selling. So no, Tetra's not like that. We don't charge taxes for for. There's not, we don't the sale of token has nothing to do with the protocol fees. So it's just you stake and you earn fees, and the, the fees come from the users uh, using the protocol. So it's completely different. So Pax contractor, Red Squirrel says yield inception. You know, yield inception. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we we're not going to go there because it's uh yeah. Squirrel said it in the chat. That means it's like he's president, right? When he says it, it's not classified anymore. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, 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 this way, we've done that and it's crazy. Just, that's all I can say. I'm, I'm excited for that kind of crazy. That sounds oh, it's, crazy good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Y'all, y'all this, put it this way. You haven't seen nothing yet. I can promise you. This is just the beginning. You keep saying that, Neil, and I want to see it though. It's like it's like everyone says we're so yeah. early. So, and you know what? I'm tired of being early. I want to be, be <laughs> right. mid cycle. Neil, okay? Neil, you're right. We haven't seen nothing yet. Come on, like let's release it. <laughs> uh, yeah, literally, exactly. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. I I have a zoomed in screenshot on the website. That's what we've seen so far. Uh, but <laughs> I, no, we're excited to see it. Win VPN, squirrel. That's what I say to that. <laughs> Type in RH Max VPN if you want to see some of my VPN uh, conversations. Uh, or on the speaking codes. Uh, anybody else have any? any qu- yeah, we'll wrap it up here. We're about at the hour mark. Uh, Gerardo wasn't able to join us because he, uh, he said he's busy devving on Metro. Totally understand. I told him earlier, I'm like, hey, if you want to join, if not, I, I get it. You, uh, you get a launch to, to do. Walrus also shout out to Walrus, he'll come on and uh, go through some liquid loans. I got a lot of interesting, I've been making a lot of notes with uh, to talk to Walrus about. So, next time you guys see me stream with Walrus. It's going to be extremely technical. I have a feeling it's going to be, it's yeah. going to be good. By, by the way, there was a bug in the code. That's why they didn't launch. It's delayed again. Oh. The loans. Fe, the Fetch yeah, Oracle, what? Yeah, Fetch Oracle had a bug and they had to go and fix it. So that's that's why. That's why we have testnet, right? That's yep. why we uh, have audits and testnet yep. and all that stuff. So that, that's it's another couple of weeks, CC said. So that's that's on it. I mean, it's, it's out of their hands. It's got to be fixed. I mean, <sighs> you, you don't want bad code. Two weeks. That's uh, we got eleven days until October. Still here. <laughs> nah, it, it'll be November before they can launch. And he said it, it, several weeks because they got to you know, get it, get it fixed, go to the auditors, get it redone, test it out, stress it, and all the stuff. So it'll take several weeks to get that done. Look, I'd rather be right than fast. I want it accurate because I do not want to get wrecked. You don't want to get wrecked, and nobody wants to get wrecked out there on some bad code. We want to use the product and and feel feel like it's doing what it's supposed to do, and it's not going to uh, the money's the money's going to be where we left it. We all we want that to happen in all crypto stuff for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, gentlemen, great stream, great stream. This is a great open mic. Um, what do you uh, what do you want to take us out on? Either something you're working on, or something you're excited about, or we're just closing closing thoughts. We'll start with Neil. Well, you know, I, we we are our our, our vision is. Uh, it's something that you know we have taken the position we, we like to provide the service for people and we're not out to uh to shill tokens or that's not that's not our thing and, and what we've done is we created a environment to uh to provide service for uh, the community and it's going to continue with the products we're going to release here in the future so as you see more and more stuff come online uh, you'll see that uh, we're going to keep that same mindset as we're trying to provide service and utility uh for the ecosystem so we can all grow and uh and share this adventure together. 
Yeah, we definitely got a lot of a lot of info on that today. And every time, yeah, every time you come on stream or Stu or otherwise, I feel like I know a little bit more and get a little bit more excited. So uh, it's coming, baby. All these things are coming. Tetra, Tetra will be here before you know it. We hope. Thanks, Payday. Yeah, no, thanks, thanks so much. Appreciate appreciate you guys working on this stuff. It's a, definitely needed. So um, look forward to it. Um, yeah, um, I guess you know, support open source projects. <laughs> uh that's that's uh that's something i'd say um i encourage everybody to be open source i encourage everybody to you know um focus on the tokens that are uh that are providing them value big or small um and uh yeah um let's let's reduce those end state fees <laughs> get in touch with, it, with me I'm, I'm i'm hex payday everywhere twitter telegram if you want to if you want help with that so yeah, um, looking forward to hopefully uh, either creating a strategy or integrating on some deeper, deeper level with Tetra in the future, um, if that's if that's uh, something that you guys are open to. But um, yeah, for now we'll just uh, keep building. So yeah, we look forward to you know provide service for any of the guys want to use your your stuff. We can automate it, and um, I hope people do use it because I mean it's it's a good good thing to help with the fees, you know, um, end stakes. Yeah, funny, definitely. Right? Red Squirrel just had Neil's headphones from the 1980s. And like, I hear do 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 And one of mine just died too. I'm like, I'm posting the comment now. We got a headphone uh, conversation. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I am. I'm wired in. There's no, there's no batteries. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm about to retire these. Like, these, uh, I mean, I like my AirPods, but um, they keep, I think there's something wrong with these because the battery stops just, I don't know. Maybe if you stream 200 times, they just stop working. It does. Yeah. Right. Maybe it's my fault. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, thanks everyone. Appreciate it, Coin Critic, uh, Fast Abdul, always, uh, always quick witted, and uh, always looking talking about bribes for some reason. Uh, appreciate you, man. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's all I got for y'all today. Tomorrow we'll see if we stream or not. Sunday, I don't know, but I got a stream with coffee coming up. We're gonna do some on the uh, the uh, legislation uh, AI generation help protect your bags and crypto, save crypto. I thought we we're gonna do one uh, right before that goes up, and then next week. Probably got something came here with the top of my head, but open mic for October is complete. Try to do these once a month or so. Open the community. Uh, again, I dropped the stream yard link in the chat. Sometimes there's a ton of people. Sometimes it's just me and two of the smartest people in the room, uh, which which is what happens today. So uh, yeah, great stream, everyone. Appreciate it. That's yep. all we got for you. Sci vibe and five 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 five. We are out. <laughs>